talk to you about Hidden Cobra, provide you an overview and some use cases. This is being prepared for Red Seal customers and partners. Our agenda is to review what is Hidden Cobra. We'll show you how to identify unwanted outbound access to potential command and control servers. We'll also help you identify vulnerabilities that are leveraged by the spear phishing campaign. And we'll review how to do incident investigation using the incident response features. What is Hidden Cobra? Hidden Cobra is a campaign reportedly targeting US and South Korean financial and military targets among others. It's characterized by leveraging both the Volgmer and Fallchill remote address toolkits and it's being dropped by a spear phishing attack. It requires medium skill and we believe that it's backed by financially and politically motivated state-sponsored actors. Early reports show attempts are being made to a certain set of command and control servers that are identified here. A full suspect list can be downloaded from US CERT. There are also five vulnerabilities that are being leveraged by the spear phishing attacks to drop the Volgmer fall chill toolkits. A full list of these can also be found at US CERT. Breaking command and control. How can I check to see if there are gaps in my security architecture that would enable an internal system to connect to a command and control server? First thing, among the early things that you would do would be to identify the ability of internal systems to connect to command and control servers. Following the US CERT publications on the North Korean militia cyber activity, each of the subpages for Fall Chill and tr the Trojan Volgmer have a list of IOCs and sticks that are available for review. You can leverage the list to form a query with Red Seal to determine if access is possible to these external proxies or a C2 server. Our purpose is to look for locations that are allowed to communicate outbound from our internal network to answer who has access and then ultimately where you can block it. You can start with a access query from trusted to untrusted to start to plug the gaps. Opening up Red Seal Maps and Views, we would start with the Explorer window and start an access query from trusted to untrusted. From there, we could select Advanced, which opens up Security Query Manager. And within Query Manager, we can select a sample of the IOC IP addresses from US CERT. We can update the ports and protocols to further refine our query, execute the query, and evaluate the results. In the screenshots displayed here, we see TCP UDP 443 and two of the suspect servers. Optionally, you can choose save and name the query unwanted outbound access. And this will ease the repeat query to check if your controls were properly implemented. If you do find access, you can leverage Red Seal to map the access to the controls that are allowing it. So starting with our list of access results, we would then select one of those rows and then click detailed path. And Red Seal Detail Path will articulate a hop-by-hop -hop path along with the controls that are either enabling or blocking access. You can look at the controls by right-click Show and Config to show the controls that are loaded in a particular device's configuration file. Prioritizing vulnerabilities. How can I quickly identify systems that are vulnerable to this campaign and evaluate which systems to patch or remediate first? Which systems are the ones that will impact my business the most if they're breached? The Hidden Cobra campaign is leveraging the human vulnerability in us to click on that attachment that's going to leverage a vulnerability on the endpoint to drop either the Volgmer Trojan or the Fall Chill Rat. A list of these CVEs can be found here. You can use Red Seal to create a report of the systems with these vulnerabilities, provide this to your patch remediation teams, and you can also group these systems with vulnerabilities to run further queries to prioritize remediation. For example, systems that are, have the vulnerability and also have access to critical assets. Creating a report by CVE. We can start in the Reports tab, navigate to Vulnerabilities, and create a new Vulnerability Management Report. We provided a name, and we'd apply some filters. We've included a screenshot of the CVE references and the settings. Match any of the filters, and the CVE references. Save the report. You can run the report and distribute it to patch remediation and other teams as necessary. 
You can also schedule this to be a daily report. What I want to show you now is how to create a workflow for reporting on vulnerability prioritization. When we have identified machines with relevant vulnerabilities for this particular campaign, there's an easy workflow to group these findings for reporting and campaign management. First, we'll start by creating a view group for the campaign. We'll use some Red Seal queries to populate that group, and then we'll configure reporting for vulnerability prioritization. This workflow works for multiple vulnerability campaigns and is a best practice for continuous monitoring of campaign performance. We'll start by grouping systems by CVE for prioritization, our pre-work, by start by creating a group. Red Seal has a very powerful feature called Views and Groups, and you can use these for dynamic security events to sort data for filters and queries. We're going to start with the View Editor. We'll create a new view and name it Hidden Cobra in this instance, and we'll create one or more groups to place objects in. In this example, I created one for each CVE to track them independently. An alternate workflow, you can use the Zones and Policies tab to create a policy called Hidden Cobra. Noting that every policy is a view, you can create a zone for each group which would accomplish the same thing. My recommendation is to not to activate the policy or create any rules for it just to leverage the ease of creating a view and groups. We can group systems by CVE for prioritization, leveraging the power of the Red Seal query and the ability to place query results into groups. We can start in the Maps and Views tab and change our view to Primary Capability. Select Hosts or Highlight Hosts and in the Details pane below, select Vulnerabilities. By clicking on the magnifying glass icon, and in the CVE References column, we can filter by placing one of the CVEs in it. Highlight the hosts, right-click Copy to Group. Now we can view the results by changing the view to Hidden Cobra. Then we can see all the hosts that have that CVE in the various groups that we've created. Leveraging the pre-work that we've done, we can then look at increasing our resiliency by reducing their exposure and prioritizing the remediation of systems that have access to mission critical assets. Using Maps and Views tab, opening Explorer, you can create a query from one of your predefined groups to critical. Endpoints that have access to critical groups should be prioritized and you can review these results with your patch management and other teams. You can convert a query like this to a saved query. Click Keep this window open, select Save As and name your query, such as Vulnerable to Critical. This allows you to rerun this query until you have managed the campaign to zero. To create an inventory report of vulnerable systems with access to critical, in Security Query Manager, you take the query that we saved, or you create a new one. You enable the word Tracked and select Save. Here I've created a query that shows from the CVE groups to critical assets. You can run the query by pressing the Access button once. In the Reporting Portal, Select the Access Management Report and run an Access Query Result. Select the query you saved. The resulting Access Report can be exported to Excel, PDF, or other formats. Red Seal can also be used to accelerate response and recovery. We're seeing indications we've been compromised. Indicators of compromise are being reported in my SIM. How do we prioritize which systems are addressed first? I need to know which have access to critical systems and I need to locate them quickly and accelerate my response. US CERT has made an available signature list for systems to produce indicators of compromise. I would recommend that you review these at the location on the screen. As you create indicators of compromise, you can then leverage the Red Seal Incident Response Framework to locate the physical connection to the network, assess that system's access to internal assets, determining exposure, provide a prioritized list of accessible resources by the IOC, and you can also click to calculate a path from the IOC to a particular target. This will help you place a control to eliminate that access. I hope this information has been helpful. For more information, please visit www.redseal.net.